Okay. Now, if you see when we spoke about product range that we are going to use in order to work with JBoss Suite, basic objective is to uh, you say take it forward in this way. First approach is we will assume that there are services which are already built and now we have to think from integration perspective like how actually we are going to integrate all diversified systems and how we are going to actually work with different integration patterns in order to get benefits which are provided by these patterns. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what product is used actually where? That's what will be the basic objective. And this, this, is, this is this is getting recorded, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's getting recorded. Okay. Everything is getting yeah. recorded. We, we, yeah, yeah, just I wanted to I know, just reminding you. Guys. Yeah. Yeah, everything is getting recorded. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just go and I'll start a new MS Word document. Okay, so you have pretty good idea about messaging and web services, right? Yeah, messaging and web services point of view. Yeah. Okay. Right. So what we will do is, uh, in order to set the ground so that we can start working with product, first task that we have to do is, we have to actually understand messaging. Okay. I, I do understand that you know messaging, but let's go in a sync way so that whatever I feel messaging is and whatever is your interpretation of your uh, of messaging, it's all on the same uh, level, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why you go with your because even though I know that's an I wanted to just you know yeah, get a full understanding of everything. And here we will work with product. That product is active entry. Okay. Fine. So this is what is first thing. Second, in order to set ground, we'll work with web services where we'll talk about SOAP based web services as well as REST. And mm -hmm. here I'll be using tools which is part of JBoss. Uh, there, there are various tools actually which we can use for SOAP based and REST based services. Right? It depends on you. We can cover JFC. We can also uh, cover actually Apache CSS. Mm -hmm. Right, because when we talk about fuse, this Apache CSS becomes important. Yeah, I think pretty much we will be using Apache CSS. Yes. Yes. So yes. So this is yes. So this is what is uh, second. And just for better, because your stack is on JBoss, we can also talk about JBoss WS. Mm -hmm. Right, this is a provider from JBoss. Like it's a framework from. JBoss that helps you to build or consume web services. Okay. This is what will be second. Now this will ensure that our messaging layer we understood that how actually two different uh, you can say messaging engines will talk with each other, what are channels, how actually two instances of MQ server will pass messages to mm -hmm. each other. Right. So from admin perspective as well as from developer's perspective is what we will try to cover this okay All right so this has ground like you will be able to configure uh, your fuse also finally now these two things are important in order to start then what we will do is our third step will be to understand fuse from architecture perspective mm -hmm. what is the architecture of fuse and what are the various deployment scenarios of fuse for example, what is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'll tell you, like yeah. how actually Fuse is used in clustered environment, how Fuse mm -hmm. is used in non-clustered environment, right? What exactly is the Fuse is? Fuse okay. is meant for? Fuse is the product, right, which you are, uh, Fuse actually contains, if you ask me, it contains ActiveMQ plus Camel plus mm -hmm. ESB. Plus okay. upper mm -hmm. CCXS. So this is complete suit which will have all this. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Right. So when I say fuse, it's a SOA product which is used for completing an application applying SOA or SOA lifecycle audit. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So this is what is about fuse. Then we will go and we will target what actually a service oriented architecture. We will use reference model of fuse. Because see, when we talk about SOA products in market, you have Oracle SOA suit, you have IBM SOA suits, right? You have products from uh, you say various other vendors out of which Fuse is also one of them, right? So according to Fuse, how actually you can go and make your application compliant to service oriented architecture? What reference model you have to use? That is what is objective of this particular session, okay? So this will help you to actually understand where messaging comes into picture, what product of SOA will be used for implementing what policy of service oriented architecture, right? So product is fuse, ideology mm -hmm. that we are following is SOA and what is the reference architecture provided to us by fuse in order to make your SOA model implemented in practical way. Okay, so where mm -hmm. we will talk about what is process choreography, how to do process choreography along with fuse, right? Whether fuse is capable or not. So here I will give you introduction about rules also, which will talk about rule engine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one of the main uh, uh, kind of like it is there in the rules engine is there in our architecture. Yes, so this is this. So fuse actually will work as a mediator. Mm -hmm. Its task is mediation, mm -hmm. its task is routing, and its task is transformation, right? Now when I say mediation, mediation is more at protocol level. For example, if a request is coming in form of HTTP, and I want that HTTP request to be processed by active MQ service. So here mm -hmm. what is required? From HTTP to JMS, protocol mm -hmm. translation is required, right? Yes. Fine. So that data which is coming as a payload to your HTTP uh, object can be mm -hmm. translated into a JMS object, right? That is mm -hmm. what is role of mediation. So we'll focus on mediation, routing, and transformation. Then we'll have rules using which actually we can write what rule engine. Okay, we can write rules. Uh, rules. We can create decision mm -hmm. tables. We can create decision trees, right? So we need to basically come up with our own vocabulary and then use that vocabulary in order to build rules which will get executed whenever anyone will want to uh, include it as part of their product, okay? So mm -hmm. we'll see this also. This is what is rules. Then fifth topic that we will cover here is people, right? Business mm -hmm. process execution language or expression language, mm -hmm. right? So people mm -hmm. is basically used for process choreography, mm -hmm. okay? Right, so process choreography means you have now processes which can be divided basically into two types. One is mm -hmm. automated processes and second is manual process. For example, uh, if I talk about loan process, in that loan processing you will have one process called as address verification, right? Mm -hmm. Now address verification cannot be automated until and unless a physical check will not be done at the client's place you cannot just verify that he really resides there, right? Yes, that's correct. That's what is called as manual process, okay? Mm -hmm. Or you can say also popularly called as human task, right? Okay, so, so we will talk about how actually human task, task mm -hmm. and your system task mm -hmm. is actually used in process choreography. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So this becomes your fifth one. Now sixth topic is we'll focus more on administration. Because see what happens even if I go and create a ESB project and if I deploy, sometimes mm -hmm. errors may be related to uh, poor administrative alignment of the components. Okay. Right. So we'll talk about how actually Fuse works with JBoss or Tomcat or even WebLogic we can tell so that you can understand mm -hmm. Fuse in diversified environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what are the popular errors like you say troubleshooting, before troubleshooting problem determination. Now for problem mm -hmm. determination we will be using some tools 
because we have to monitor, right? Yes. So we have to use some monitoring tool. So you can say monitoring fuse artifacts. Once mm -hmm. you keep it on monitoring, whenever there will be problem, the problem will be logged or it will be tracked, right? Mm -hmm. How to troubleshoot. Okay. So this is very important because as far as the job support goes, then we support people, this is fine. Because this is something where they can derive their logic and they can understand. Or once they understand, they'll be able to do it. They can implement the problem it. domain is this. Because as of now, it is active MQ. What if I want to use MSMQ or I want to use IBM WebSphere MQ as part of my architecture? And it is yes, obvious. Like you will, happen. you will find architectures which are actually collection of n number of products. Some from IBM, mm -hmm. some from Oracle, some from Open Source, some from JBoss or Red yep, Hat. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to be aware about those issues also, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what mm -hmm. this text part. So I feel that once we are done with this, whatever is required to be a good SOA developer as well as administrator is mm -hmm. what will be there with you because we'll end up covering one, two, three, mm -hmm. camel, ESP, camel ESP. Mm -hmm. right? And then rules. The rules engine. Yeah, and these are the major then, components that we. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we'll have JBoss people also. This is also very important actually because mm -hmm. see what happens you know rule engine. Now yep. you want to test your process where one of the tasks is calling a rule. Mm -hmm. Right. So how actually your rule engine that is rules will be integrated in the fuse. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can write a simple Java program also in order to get connected to rules and uh, execute a rule. But how actually it will be used in SOA environment. That is also mm -hmm. important, right? So these are the step-by-step -step approach that I am planning to follow. If it suits mm -hmm. you, you say yes. If something we are missing, we can definitely go ahead and add it here. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah. so in order to before... start with this, yeah, I'll, I'll just write a prerequisite, something which is missing. Mm -hmm. What I will do is I will cover JBoss 7 for you, okay? Yeah. This becomes mm -hmm. our app server. Yes, that's right. Right? In this only, we will see how to configure DB, that is database, because we will have certain tasks which are database related. How to configure MOM, that is message oriented, mobile where we can take care how actually ActiveMQ can be configured so that mm -hmm. applications can put messages in ActiveMQ and from there onwards, your SOA layer, your fuse can read that message and do the task. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right? So, this is what is one. Uh, and then uh, we'll be using Eclipse as an ID. Eclipse for ID, okay. Yeah, powered by JBoss tools. Yeah. Okay, this will mm -hmm. take time in order to install. So I want you to ensure that you have Eclipse and we are able to at least set up the ID, okay? Apart mm -hmm. from this, we will also use Fuse ID, okay? That helps mm -hmm. us to actually work effectively with Camel and rest of the Fuse products. Okay. okay. So these are the prerequisites which need to be there on the systems mm -hmm. before we start. Mm -hmm. And um, um, along with this one, enterprise integration pattern, EIPs are also part of the. Obviously, when we talk about this, right, part of the camel, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we talk about fuse here, we will have mm -hmm. enterprise integration patterns. Now these patterns, mm -hmm. if you see here. Are divided into n number of uh, n types of patterns, like so for example, message mm -hmm. construction, message routing, mm -hmm. message transformation, right? Mm -hmm. Then you mm -hmm. have message endpoints, endpoints then you yeah. have system uh, management, right? So mm -hmm. we will be using all implementing all these patterns, okay? So when I say camel, it is it will help you to write transformation logic, right? Yes. So when you write transformation logic, you will adopt some pattern. Some of the buttons, yes, that's yes. Yes. and see these are the patterns, envelope wrapper, content temperature, content filter, normalizer, right, mm -hmm. canonical data model, mm -hmm. right, so these are the patterns which we will be implementing, they become our case study, mm -hmm. right, for example, when I talk about now ESB, I have to talk about how routing is done, so these are the patterns which we will be implementing, content based mm -hmm. routing, message filter, 
recipient list, splitter, aggregator, resequencer, routing list, all these patterns we will implement. Mm -hmm. There are 60 patterns which are there, mm -hmm. not necessarily the all SOA products or integration or ESB will support all the patterns, but yes, mm -hmm. there are certain patterns which are directly supported by uh, various products. So, uh, regarding the ESB, is it uh, ESB is the DevOps implementation or it's a open source for ESB? Or okay. we are talking about the mule here? No, no, no. When we say enterprise service bus, actually it's specification written by Sun. Okay. Written so by now, Sun, right? Sun Microsystems, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They actually wrote, now it is part of Oracle. Mm -hmm. Implementation of these, this specification is done by various products. Like when we say ESB, you have various products in market. Like IBM ESB is there. This is one product. Mule mm -hmm. is there. This is one product. Then Fuse mm -hmm. also provides you ESB capability. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. See Oracle SOA suit. This also contains mm -hmm. ESB. Right. Mm -hmm. Earlier they used to give Oracle ESB, but now they have embedded it in Oracle SOA suit mm -hmm. itself. So okay, pretty much they all stand follow the same standards of uh, yes, yes. implementation. They will okay. all implement these patterns, mm -hmm. right? So once you know one ESB, for example, if we will complete Fuse ESB, I will show you how actually quickly you can work with new ESB also. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can take three hours, and in that three hours, I can translate whatever enter, you say integration logic you have written using Fuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On mute. Okay. Okay. Right. After that, you can take case study for yourself also. Like, okay, fine. I know mute now, and I know fuse. Now let's go and translate our existing understanding with Oracle So that also you can do. Okay. So in fact, we can uh, try out all. Right? Once you know one ESP, rest of them becomes uh, very easy for you because it's mm -hmm. not tool. It is these implementations. Which matters. Yes. The rest of them are just drag and drop. And yes, understanding few capabilities of the product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you see. So, um, yeah. one quick question like uh, if you talk about the JBoss middleware, right? So, yeah. what are the products that comes under JBoss middleware? Okay. Okay, some of them are here, some of them we have here as open source technologies like Apache Scape and, uh, and JBoss WS is their own implementation of the services. And yes. uh, when, they, when they say that JBoss yeah, middleware yeah. stack of products. See, when we talk about JBoss middleware stack, okay. First of all, JBoss is collection of n number of open source technologies. Okay. Right. Now, Red Hat took over JBoss, mm -hmm. right. And they said we are going to provide you enterprise version of JBoss, mm -hmm. right? So now you have two op options. One is you can use open source. Yep, that is right. Right. Second one you can use Red Hat mm -hmm. JBoss. That means they have built JBoss. What mm -hmm. we can do, we can take the open source and we can build our own JBoss, right? Mm -hmm. Red Hat did what? They took JBoss open source and they build and they provided that build to us that okay fine, you need not go and build it, we have built it for you and we are taking responsibility of providing you support, mm -hmm. right? So when you see somewhere, some some places you will find JBoss EAP, have you seen EAP this? And, uh, yeah, yeah, one is the community version, right? that is the regular so version. That, that comes open under source. open source. Okay. Source, but yeah. when we talk about Red Hat JBoss, it is JBoss EAP. JBoss EAP, enterprise application. Yeah. Right, enterprise application platform, right? Mm -hmm. So here what they have done, they have customized JBoss, they have tried simplifying it and they commit support. You will not get some support if you go and download community and all because for support now you have to Free depend version. on community. Mm -hmm. Right. So Red Hat took this opportunity and they came up with JBoss EAP and they said that, okay, fine, we are there to support you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what is different. And it is collection of n number of open source products. For example, Hibernate comes along with JBoss for persistence layer. Mm -hmm. Right. For messaging, if you see, you have Hornet Q now. Okay, Hornet Q. Right. 
earlier it used to be jboss mq but now it is format queue for caching it is now infinite span earlier it used to be jboss cache mm -hmm. okay so you have messaging you have infinite span for caching for transaction mm -hmm. management they depend on that arduino stack for mm -hmm. jts web container is your tomcat mm -hmm. that's what is your web container then ejb container is also there apart from that web service container is there and for managing your clusters they are using two other products mm -hmm. one is j group for automatic discovery mm -hmm. okay j group plus infinite span is what they use for clustering mm -hmm. j group j group provides automatic discovery capabilities and infinite span provides caching to capabilities why because assume that you have four servers and in all four servers you have deployed the same web application to get load balancing and workload management right mm -hmm. now whenever request comes if that request is session specific that means it will write some session data on the server mm -hmm. now what happens in case if the same client places a request and current server which holds your session specific data is not ready it has to be delegated that request will be delegated to other server right mm -hmm. now since that cache was written local client will get a message saying session expired why because you are now on a new server mm -hmm. this is bad experience by user in order to eliminate this you will try to replicate session specific data on all server side right, in the cluster in the cluster for mainly for the payload kind of thing right situation yeah, for payload yes so for that you have to do replication infinite span provides you that distributed cache management feature so the replication of the not only the data but it is a, i mean actual the cache right yes it is actual cache yes. it is infinite span which is uh, there that provides you that capability so <laughs> this is what is jboss layer 1 now comes jboss layer 2 where they say that we are going to provide you jboss specific soa implementation right so initially they came up with jboss soa suite but later they adopted fuse to work in their soa layer mm -hmm. so you will have fuse right complete so fuse, fuse is kind of like an integrated environment that yes, it is like a soa soa suite so that suit. helps you to that helps you to do integration mediation and you say eip implementation okay got it okay so this is what i feel to be the agenda mm -hmm. right now you have eclipse on your system right um not on this system actually but i have another system now which has okay, so i'll just show you what you have to do because it takes time to actually complete this activity without this probably we will not be able um, to do hands on yeah i did that um eclipse kepler installation and everything i'm familiar with those things and the only one thing problem so when i was trying to install the jboss tools by going yeah. to the uh, plugins some I and no, not the install softwares for some reason it was blocking and i'll show you how to do that yeah yeah we have to do step by step because if you will select all right what happens it will start downloading all the plugins so we will uh, do it step by step so because i told mm -hmm. you will be taking two id one is fuse and second is eclipse okay the first thing it's uh, again after installation of eclipse yeah i think if you show it to me then i will I'll, I'll follow that all stuff but yeah, basic so installation of eclipse and because i'm from there with this tools and so it's not a problem i can catch it yeah so i'll just show you the step because it takes time so you can complete it and yeah
So I have a 64 bit operating system on Windows 7 and uh, um, pretty good I mean configuration is also good only thing is um, um, so I need to install the Kepler and everything has to be 64 bit only right. Yeah. The first problem I had was when I tried to install uh, JBoss tools. Mm -hmm. That's where it's not working. Okay, I'll show you. Uh, yeah. See now, so this is what is Eclipse which I have started. Okay. And if I go here to help, I'm. It will ask me JBoss uh, because some of the JBoss tools I have already installed in this. It is asking me, do you want to add this server? I'll add it. So you can actually install JBoss also directly from Eclipse. You need not go into external install. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. If you go to uh, yeah. if you go to uh, Eclipse market marketplace, place. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you type for uh, JPAS tools for Kepler, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. You have to do one by one because it will select too many, right? It will take lots of time, and meanwhile, if some problem is there in network, mm -hmm. everything is. If you put JPAS. Now, if you see here, JBoss tools. I I can't hear you. It's breaking. Yeah, if you see here, JBoss tools are is there, right? No, I can. It was I, for some reason your screen is not showing. Hello.
hear me? I can't hear you. It's breaking. I mean, uh, I lost almost like five minutes. I don't know. Okay. So what I did, I just selected these tools. If you see, context and dependency injection, JAX RS, and mm -hmm. JBoss AS, JBoss Web Services. Only well, these are important mm -hmm. as of now. Not more than this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will not select all otherwise we will be in problem. So, these four are there which we have to just install it. Okay, mm -hmm. you will get the recording of this so you can see. These are important That's because we will be yeah, we'll be using all this. Okay. So, can you go up one for a quick second? One is uh, yeah. context and dependent injection, charts are stores and uh, come back and down. And uh, there are three of them on the ground, right? Yes. Jacks, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. GMX control, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is what we have to install. Mm -hmm. I'll cancel so this. Is where yes, this is where actually we'll be building our services. Mm -hmm. Okay, now after building our services, we need a good editor so that we can go and uh, write our integration logic and all for four purposes, right? For that, mm -hmm. we have what? For that, we have you say. Choose ID. So that anyhow, I'll tell you how to install. I'll make you install along with me because there are some settings that we need to do together. Uh, Niranjan, I think your voice is breaking. Is there any? Do you have any bandwidth issues or something? So bandwidth issue is not there at the small. Uh, it was good only. Since I'm there at home, I'm not there in office. It's not that good. Uh, because it was not scheduled right yesterday, <laughs> only I came to me. Otherwise, I might okay. have been in office by this time. Okay. I take sessions from office only where we have around uh, 60 Mbps line. So, that will not yeah, be a good at least. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, let's go and write here fuse ID. Right. So, what what is the purpose for um, Eclipse that you basically um, in? In, yeah, for see, object, yes, objective of Eclipse is that, that will hold our applications because see when we talk about integration right we need to have some place where our applications will be created and they will be managed. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can use the fuse you see fuse in our Eclipse as well right, but what I want to do is I want to have my fuse layer different and my application layer different. This is the reason we will work with two Eclipse. One is Eclipse okay. scheduler along with JBoss tools, and second one is JBoss ID, JBoss Fuse ID. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see, this is what we have to download. Mm -hmm. JBoss Fuse. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will not go with OpenShift because OpenShift is the cloud. We will go with mm -hmm. uh, JBoss Fuse 6.1. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So once we download this, the central by service box, production environment will be ready. So, so that, comes with, um, that comes with that comes with enterprise uh, service box as well, right? Yes, you see it there, right? JBoss Fuse contains what? Apache Active M2, Camel and Apache CXO. Camel oh, and Apache mm -hmm. CXO. Okay, so all these three are part of JBoss Fuse. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. These these are there like full support for AMQP. Now AMQP is a new protocol actually, which came mm -hmm. up with Rabbit MQ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now how to classify this AMQP? Or what is the benefit? See, usually when you connect to any MOM, you used to use TCP protocol or some pro proprietary protocol provided by them. Mm -hmm. Right. So developers used to face problem because sometimes they have to create. You say messaging objects, keeping in mind active MQ, web server MQ, because all of them had some extra headers which were very specific to their product, right? Mm -hmm. so in order to remove that problem, you they came up with AMQP protocol. That you see provides wire level compatibility across connections. So they made it protocol independent. So if active MQ says that I am aware I have implementation of AMQP. You need not bother about creating your message keeping in mind protocol which is understood by ActiveMQ. It will automatically take up AMQP and it will translate it into ActiveMQ. 
message. Okay. Right. So we have to download this and we have to be ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So if you see now install to first go inst install Red Hat if you see this same approach. Mm -hmm. Or what we can do we can have this update site and we can go and install. One second, one second. So that the new down. Okay. So yeah, I'll go to go install new software. Right. I'll go. So you are installing as part of the Eclipse, or you are in separate installation? No, yeah, it's in this Eclipse, but we will have a separate installation for that. I'm just showing you how actually we can do it. We will have two environments uh, if you are one is for development or application component other one is for integration component. Integration so, so you need to do the both right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we will have two different environments so that we can be clear with what is the application component and what is the SOA based component. You see here you are getting everything right. Okay. You are getting Beeple editor, Drool, ESP. JBPM, okay. And if you go here, you see fuse. Are you able to see? Yes, yes. Okay. So this is the part which we have to actually set up. Okay. So what I'll do, I will pass on one document to you where I will uh, write it step by step, copy paste the screenshot which will come so that installation for you becomes easy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because all components if we will sit and install it will be a big issue but in that sense it will take lots of time. So we will go according to our content right. For example today we need a new fuse camel. So we will just go with fuse camel editor and runtime features okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and you will have the document that specifies about all the step by step right. So yeah, tomorrow I am going to follow that one and install yeah, a couple of things. Follow that one. So install it. So are you installing everything or only the required ones? No, no, we will just go step by step. For example, when we will start up with camel, we will install camel. Then we will start okay. up with people, we will install people. When mm -hmm. we will start with rules, we will uh, install tools. Oh, okay. 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 So step by step, we will go and keep on updating. So this is for developing application point of view. So this is for developing integration logic. Integration logic, okay. Your applications are already developed. You have mm -hmm. endpoint of those applications. For example, in order to invoke a web service, you have endpoint with you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in order to put a message to a queue, you have an endpoint with you, right? So, what you yes. have to do now, you have to write integration logic. So, in order to write integration logic, you will be using all these things. This is the reason I told you that keep two different eclipse. One Eclipse is only for application development where we will create our web services and all right mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. environment will be only for writing integration logic. Okay. That you when you write integration logic you are not bothered about component level of logic. So in that case so you have to keep the two instances of Eclipse install or something? Yes, yes, yes. that's mm -hmm. what I will suggest you so that your integration and your application components are different because here you see I do not need JBoss. When I write integration, right? I don't need JBoss. Yeah, that makes sense. My so application will need JBoss. Mm -hmm. After I write my integration logic, then I will decide, okay, where is my fuse runtime? Like you have web service runtime, right? Mm -hmm. So when you make call to your web server, it is web service runtime which uh, takes responsibility of executing the web service, right? Yes. Okay, for simple uh, like you have EJB container right, where you keep your EJB in EJB container, yes. where you keep your web component, where file in web container right. In application container. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we will be using this in order to write our integration logic and that integration logic will be deployed in what runtime, fuse runtime mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, it will yes. again be a jar file which we will go and deploy it in fuse runtime. Now that fuse mm -hmm. runtime itself can be present in JBoss. 
we can deploy we can add our fuse runtime as a container in our jboss as well or in tomcat mm -hmm. as well or in any other app server or it can be stand alone also mm -hmm. okay so, so this is what is different uh, and application server also supports a specific fuse con container as well right Absolutely. Yes, you can, the integration yes, you can make your fuse container available in your JBoss. Mm -hmm. You can do clustering of your fuse runtime. Mm -hmm. Clustering capability will be provided by JBoss, and your fuse container will be always present with failover and load balancing capabilities. So it is like one of those web containers, and uh, you know, oh, yes. your containers one of the containers. Yes, it is one of the containers which it's takes responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yes, of keeping integration component. That's it. Okay. 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 So that container is pretty much uh, it's a JBoss. Um, mm. It's a lightweight um, container, uh, uh, for sure. It's so a lightweight container. Like uh, if I created yes. integrations of using uh, whatever all the technologies. And that those integrations can be ported to like what I'm telling is uh, you have a J2E that is usually you know you if you have a application server which is a J2E component that pretty much it supports WAR file and you know you know regular JAR file so EJBs but like yeah. that we have any standard container like yeah. you know the yeah. specification or something yes ESB is the specification itself mm -hmm. right. And this ESB is nothing but it's a container. Okay. Now that container is lightweight, which can be placed in a web container or in a. You can say you can place it in any app server. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes to writing integration logic, packaging it and deploying it, products comes in two different flavor of uh, packaging. One is .dot 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 file. It will be your mm -hmm. integration logic will be packaged in form of .dot .dot. Second is mm -hmm. proprietary also. For example, when you go with Apache Access, you have dot .aar, right? Mm -hmm. Apache Access Archive. Mm -hmm. That is specific to Apache Access, but same dot .aar can be deployed in Apache Access using dot .zar. Mm -hmm. So after writing your integration logic, you can package it in dot .zar and you can deploy it in your queue. Okay. Runtime and that fuse runtime itself can be uh, placed there in JBoss, mm -hmm. in WebLogic, or wherever you want. Mm -hmm. Or even you can keep it standalone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is what we have to do. I will send you the document. Let's uh, be ready with the installation and then we'll start up with our plan that we have already made. I will mail you this plan. You can keep on updating it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As soon as uh, you feel that it is required. So I'll just go and copy it. I'm creating one Google Drive with you uh, so that I can share everything there. Is yeah, I gave him. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, what is his name? Uh, Anthony. I gave him Anthony uh, my Google email address. Okay, now this will be there only between you and me. I'm not sharing okay. with everyone. Mm -hmm. Right, let's go and create here and. Yeah, be... whatever the um, you know documents or anything files on yeah. just share it there. Yeah. So we can keep on improvising it because you will also understand about this and probably your requirement will keep on uh, changing or growing. So we can yeah, just go and exactly. make entry here. Mm -hmm. Only one thing I was uh, I couldn't realize I need to check those couple of documents about they were talking about one uh, caching technology. So I'll I'll let you know in the next class about that. 
Yeah, so that was integral part of any application actually. Mm-hmm. So this is what so we discussed today. This is what. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can keep on adding. You see your requirement and. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. share it with you. Can you tell me your Gmail ID? It's uh, my first name Kishore. K I S H O R E. K I S H O R E. Dot. K E R. L L O. P A L L I. Yeah. Update. Right. Gmail. Dot com. So I'll just send it. Okay, it, it's the same place where I will uploading all the material also. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And also, I don't want to make uh, everything public. So. Yeah, yeah. And also make um, just send the installation, you know, steps and the thing also. So in yeah, case. that I will send you. Mm-hmm. I'll send you that. Okay. And also the links and what are the things that needs to yes, be installed. Yes, everything you will get. Uh, in another two three hours, you will get everything. Installation document you will get, and yeah. then a plan you will get. What actually I'm going to do in this? What actually I'm going to do in this? Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'll be planning because now time has come when I have to see or do planning, and then we'll share plan. We'll start, and whenever you feel that something is needed or something needs to be added yeah, from sure. here or there, mm-hmm. we'll keep on adding it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, one more thing. Uh, yeah, and then this is something like not just I want to ask you for how yeah. good you are at um, um, Java design pattern when it comes to your point. I mean, you have like a, I mean, you are also I mean have aware of those of Spring frameworks and all that stuff. Right? Yeah. Uh, yes, I am aware about those things as well. Uh, how well I I cannot just say. No, just you know, no, 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 not well, but at least you know to solve no, I'm, regular. I'm certified. Uh, I'm Spring Source certified, so okay. So without <laughs> certification, I don't go for taking the okay. challenges. So I'm certified. Something like you know, utilizing have, effectively, like in a when you got a situation to uh, kind of like implementing some of the the design patterns not the eips i'm talking about regular no, java design patterns with the spring yes 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 sure we you can you can mm-hmm. because i work very closely with oracle and oracle clients are one of the you say one of the important mm-hmm. sources for me so mm-hmm. you will get and also um when you when you get a chance i'm in mean, situation like now to um, if we need to put it like a couple of uh, Class diagrams and uh, sequence diagrams, or something like that, effectively yeah, using yeah. tools. You be you, you be know. open in that. I'm very much comfortable. Yeah. I'll show you because I have uh, contributed to various projects in US. I'll show you one of them. Uh, oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are few things which, for example, I'm a certified architect, so I get material from Sun Microsystems. Uh, you can mm-hmm. see Oracle now. Very frequent. Mm-hmm. See, this is what is technical architecture. Where I have. I remember. You remember we have in the first session we discussed about you showed a lot of you know, the projects, different architectures and high level and all that stuff. You yeah, know, all in design. I know a couple of. Mm-hmm. All this. You know, sometimes I might need like. Cycle. Yeah, when you sometimes see. you know when I need to will help you know maybe I will ask you a couple of things you know. Yeah. 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 Sure. You can. You have like you can go and. Implement design pattern. All design patterns are there. You can discuss with me. There is no issue. I will yeah. also know your like. I look for real time questions yeah. <laughs> rather than implement. only academic. Yeah. I'm open for that. Don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. If you see, this is what is for an architect actually. I'll share this document with you. Mm-hmm. Some of the common, like you know, factory patterns and the, you know decorative yes, patterns. Yes. Those those are the things like command patterns that we use in regularly. So I wanted to have like a real time examples or something to you know kind of. A yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that in Springs also. You can ask. <laughs> I have a situation like uh, um, I don't know, recently I worked with one project. Like oh um, my god, like they have created too much of. I mean, basically they create APIs. Okay. For the internal um, uh, companies, uh, they use like all the other departments of different applications, web applications. They use all their APIs. 
but it has been like over engineered. It's, let me I must, let me tell you one simple thing is uh, all the all the simple uh, art organization management. So you have a bunch of methods like you know you have like an you know, ad organization, delete organization, like you know it's a web service. Okay. And uh, these are the four methods in this part between from the interface to like you know the service implementation like the interface to your actual service layer. You have a seven layers of abstraction. Oh my God! <laughs> like, uh, is it required? I mean, it depends. Might be. I don't know. Some, some, sometimes. Oh, it, and also, you are. Um, um, one more thing. Like, uh, you are also prepared with um, uh, any security and all that stuff. Like, you know, how to. Yes, I have security. heard. Yeah, we can uh -huh. secure web services. Uh, we can secure uh, RESTful web services. We can secure. Uh, we can implement security. You can say we can. Like you tell me the environment, and I'll tell you how to secure it. Like JBoss security management is different. WebLogic it is different, right? Uh -huh. From developer's perspective, if you are asking, then we'll be using a framework called as ACGA. It's a framework. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's not necessary that only Spring can use it. We can use it in our own web applications also because. The framework is external framework. Spring just took that framework. Yeah, there are different ways of uh, like interceptors and all that stuff. So there are sometimes no, we. No, the interceptors and all are components which comes in the framework. Yeah, it comes in the framework. Yeah. So we need to basically understand that how actually uh, interception of request is happening and what all interceptors are required in order to authenticate and check for authorization, right? So mm -hmm. basically, when it comes to that flow, it's simple. Only thing is whether you want authentication to an LDAP-based security registry or to database or to a file system. Yeah, I mean, what, uh, theoretically, I mean, I have just only point. No, practically, also we can do it. Will not take much time. Okay, we can do it. Only one LDAP server needs to be set up. We can use Open LDAP, and then we can, or if it is Spring, we can write uh, flows, and we can go and we can. Yeah, just in case. I mean, we'll do it in our fuse also. Okay. Yeah, I think I heard that. I think you were the one telling us it would be very easy to, like, if you are implementing the same thing and using code, it's like you have to do a lot of stuff. Whereas here in fuse, you can create, like, um, one of the endpoints as a web services yes. endpoint and you can add the security easily. Yeah, because it's all declarative in nature. So you need not write code. Ah. Do you have any knowledge on single sign on uh, or SAML based? Open SSO is what I have used. Now, for single sign on, also, there are different tools or different frameworks. Mm -hmm. I have used Open ID, Open SSO. That's what I have used. Okay. So, um, the timings, right? So, usually, uh, so you, 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 I mean today I think we can like in Chile to set up. I think you are also not aware of it. So, but usually we will start sharp by um, is it nine thirty nine forty five? Is it works out for you? Yeah, it works out for me. You you have to just tell it to Anthony once because he maintains the calendar. So I don't know what is the situation as of now. Uh, he will uh, uh, right now. It's see, it's between uh, you, you and me. Like flexibility because uh, you tell me. I mean. Okay, we, okay. We, so what we will do is no. What we will do is we will take uh, ask Anthony to block the slot officially there, right? And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I will always keep my calendar shared with you so that you can see when you are free. You just let me know three hours before. I'll come and I'll join mm -hmm. the session. Okay. So uh, shall we have one more class tomorrow? Session uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is what date? The yeah, we can have. Front. Okay, yeah, and then Friday, I mean, I will be available for Friday, then we can have it on Saturday okay. and uh, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we can have it. Okay. By the time if I get some time tomorrow uh, evening, I, probably I will install those things. And just okay. see, I will try send to you the document. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks, Kishore. We will just go through it, and believe me, once we are done with the session, all recordings, it will be a very rich recording. So um, you know, Narendra, um, uh, it's like a little request from my side to so make it like you know, um, hands on, and you try to make real time. Hands on, hands -on and you know, um, 
and also it knows the hundred percent hands on. And when it comes to mm-hmm. real time, it is there in your hand. You share your architecture, we will implement the same. And I also like to have the channel. So. Yeah, yeah. Those things, you know, because you know, still it's a couple of weeks are there. So for me, so this I thought of my idea. So we will create some use cases, some generic mm-hmm. use cases, and we will implement it. It is required in all projects. Yeah, but when we, when you pick up those generic use cases, try to see the maximum in real time. What are the things that we need? There is a real time so, because if you see one of the use cases that we can take it. Request mm-hmm. is uh, sent by a browser that is user has invoked a browser. He has mm-hmm. entered some details. That need to come to MQ, and from MQ it needs to be converted to XML. And after converting it to XML, if order size is more than this, it should go there. If it is less than this, it should be processed by this. Right? So in these these type of case studies we will be doing. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, it it will be in a way where you can translate it in any requirement. Mm-hmm. And anyhow, like, yeah. so once you see that maturity level is not there, you can also suggest that. Yeah, that's why you know when we when we when we when you have plans for any use case, you know, try to make it like more complicated, you know, as well. Yeah, no. Like, what know, what so will be the approach? Any... First of all, what will be approach? I'll tell you, Kishore. First, we will go with exploring mm-hmm. the fuse capabilities. Okay. Yes. When yes. you explore fuse capabilities. Use mm-hmm. cases need to be simple. For example, now today I want to work with splitter pattern, right? So we have mm-hmm. to explore that splitter pattern, mm-hmm. content-based routing. Routing. We have to explore that. Mm-hmm. Once we have explored that, corresponding to that, we will take up a real case study and we'll implement. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll plan it properly. Don't worry. Yeah. If anything is also, I mean, I will. Yeah. Also, I, I mean, I'll, I'll share the things. What exactly you're looking or something like that. Yes, yes, you can share that so that we can frame the case study. I'm ready to simulate the environment also here at my airport. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. um, we'll be meeting tomorrow. The same yeah, uh, time of nine nine forty five. Shall we make yeah, it yeah. like nine forty five East Coast time? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. See you in the meeting tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.